Okay. You got to know Otani quite well playing for Team Japan. Yeah. Can you tell us what he's like as a guy getting to know him as a team? Yeah, I mean, um, sleeps a lot. I asked him if he wanted to go eat yesterday, and he, you know, he said he was sleeping. So, um, no, he's he's a normal guy. He's humble dude. Like I've said it before, but he's comfortable in his own skin. Um, that's kind of what stood out to me the most is that he's just one of the guys and um, awesome guy, awesome friend. Um, obviously, an amazing baseball player, but yeah, I mean, pretty pretty easy going. The fact that you guys bonded, that's pretty cool for you, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. I, I just think mainly going over there and, and having him accept me and um, obviously his word means a lot. So um, the fact that he, he embraced me, I think, um, helped me and I think helped, helped the team, honestly. How about him as a player that can do so much? I mean, maybe more hits historic, the things he can do. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you hear everything and, and, you know, you see the highlights or whatever, but seeing it day to day, um, Seeing him take BP, I'd never seen anything like it. And then when he sorry about that, and when he went to Miami and he took BP, um, I talked to Nolan after the game, and he said he had never seen anything like it. So I was like, okay, you know that that's you know Nolan's seen some guys, and he's obviously an obsessive player, and you know um, a Hall of Fame player in his own right. But for him to say that about Otani, that was when I knew um, I wasn't just making these things up. Hey Lars, can you describe in your own words just? The amazingness that he's the only one yeah. that hits and pitches, but he's also like if he hit really well right. and was just okay at pitching, it'd yeah. still be cool. Yeah, but right. He's elite at both. Yeah, and I think I think um, that's why he's able to do what he does. Like when he first, I talked to him a little bit about it. When he first was playing for the fighters over in Japan, um, he was only going to pitch um, because there was a lot of scrutiny and there's a lot of doubt about it. But um, and I, I honestly don't know if coming here, um, he had that rough spring training. I don't know if. If he had the ability to not be a top 10 hitter as, long as, as, as well as a top 10 pitcher, I don't think that they would allow him to do it. But because um, he's so above and beyond in, in both of those things, I think that's what allowed him to do it. And I think he's probably opened some doors to some people that maybe don't have the exact ability, but um, you know, say they're a tier two or tier three in both of them, maybe they'll be able to, to stay. But um, because he's able to be elite at both of those, I think um, you know, it's pretty amazing. Lars, Lars, you I'm, guys sure talk? You, I'm sure you've answered this question a hundred times, but the pepper grinder when you guys were over there, <laughs> how did you convince him to do it and were you surprised that he did? Um, I, I just asked him, like, I, I mean, for me, it was like I was going to a new team, new culture, new language, everything like that. So um, I asked him, like, hey, what are we doing for celebrations? And he's like, we don't really do anything with the Angels, so um, whatever you do, we'll roll with it. So, I mean, that's just kind of going back to Jim. Like, that's just who he is. He's just easy going. So got a base hit and did what I knew and, you know, did the pepper grinder. And then after that, you know, the guys kind of rallied behind that. So um, that's kind of how it was decided. I asked Darvish, but Darvish is kind of a pitcher, so it didn't really, it, you know, it didn't really count. So, um, but yeah, so I, I kind of did it. He, he rolled with it. And like I said, um, him having that, you know, presence in Japan, that's kind of how it kicked off. Did you see they made it into a t-shirt too? The, yeah, 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 yeah. I have one of those. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Lars, we in the, in the United States probably don't have the same appreciation for the way Otani or the WBC is viewed over there. Yeah. So, what was your impression of just like what the whole atmosphere was like surrounding him and the event itself? Yeah, this is just a Tuesday over there in Japan in the <laughs> WBC. Um, you know, it's it, the media coverage is crazy over there. Obviously, the fandoms, you know, they're they're passionate over there. You know, the fans are. Are, um, they're serious about it. I think they said something like 97% of households or whatever TVs in Japan um, were watching that last pitch. Um, you know, I just think um, you go to a game at the Tokyo Dome and you got 50,000 screaming and chanting the same exact thing in unison. Um, you know, the fans, you know, uh, following the bus everywhere, greeting us at the stadium. You kind of get an understanding of how much it really means. Out.